Now we begin at the Central Criminal Court, popularly called the Old Bailey in London, where Ike Koyamadu, a former deputy president of the Senate, and his wife were found guilty of organ harvesting along, a, along with a doctor who is said to have been the middleman. Their daughter, Miss Sonia, who was the intended recipient of a kidney belonging to a street trader in Lagos, was found not guilty. This is a developing story. We'll bring you more updates in the course of our bulletins. Well, let's tell you that President Muhammad Buhari has signed two bills recently passed by the National Assembly in Tullo. The Senior Special Assistant to the President on National Assembly Matters, Nasiru Ila, made this known in a statement issued earlier today. The bills assented to by President Buhari are copyright Federal College of Medical Laboratories and uh, Science and Technology, just bills. According to Mr. Ila, the President assented to the bills on March the 17th. The principal objectives of the new law, as outlined in Section 1, are to protect the rights of authors and ensure just rewards and recognition for their intellectual efforts, provide appropriate limitations and accept exceptions to guarantee access to creative works. And the government of Namibia says it looks forward to good and cordial working relations with the president-elect Ahmed Bola Tinubu. The High Commissioner of the Republic of Namibia to Nigeria made this statement at the celebration of his 33 years independence in Abuja. The High Commissioner acknowledged the great role Nigeria played in ensuring it gained independence and hopes for closer bilateral ties, especially as Namibia prepares to host Nigeria for the fifth session of the Namibia-Nigeria Joint Commission of Cooperation. It hopes to sign about 10 memoranda and agreements to seal the bilateral cooperation. And elsewhere, the Nigeria Labour Congress has directed public sector workers in the country to commence an indefinite strike from Wednesday next week. At a news conference in Abuja, NLC President Joe Ajero directed that affiliate unions constituting the Nigeria Labour Congress should also be on standby for picketing, uh, picketing exercise across all branches of the Central Bank of Nigeria nationwide. The directive followed the expiration of one-week ultimatum by the Congress last week. NLC had criticized the cash swap policy of the federal government and the persistent petrol scarcity across the country. NLC president said the decision to pick up the CBN branches became necessary as the federal, federal government and the CBN have not shown any commitment to address the situation. This week, from Friday, there will be mobilization of all state councils through a next meeting. All unions are already, have already been directed to mobilize all their organs and their branches by Wednesday next week. All central bank from the CBN headquarters will be shot till further notice. Workers are directed to stay at home and join in the picketing exercise. I'm moving now to the nation's capital, where the federal high court sitting in Abuja has dismissed an application filed by suspended deputy commissioner of police, Abakiari, challenging the jurisdiction of the court to try him. Delivering ruling, Justice Emeka Awiti held that the powers of the police service commission do not supersede the powers of the Federal High Court. Celestin Area reports. Personnel of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. The federal government is clearly impressed with the performance of the NDLE under the leadership of General Buba Marwa. Three quarters of 2023, about 18,940 arrests were affected by the NDLEA. The Federal High Court says he has the power to hear drug-related offenses as enshrined in the Constitution and the NDLEA Act. The court noted that the subject matter of the case against suspended Deputy Commissioner of Police is within the jurisdiction of the Federal High Court. Section 251 of the Constitution confers the cause the power to hear and determine the charges brought before it. 
about Kiawe had told the court that the charges against him were premature, insisting that the NDLEA ought to have allowed the police to exhaust its internal machinery before it instituted the action. He told the court that the police had already commenced an investigation into allegations against him and issued an interim report. Mr. Kiawe maintained that he could only be charged to court upon conclusion of the internal investigation by the police. He argued that the Police Service Commission has similar powers to investigate and discipline airing police officers in line with the Police Act and regulations, the same way the National Judicial Council disciplined judicial officers. Justice Waiter stressed it is wrong to give the Police Service Commission the same statute of provisions with the National Judicial Council. It was taken at the last adjourned date and really was delivered today. The court in its wisdom is of the opinion that Police Service Commission is not listed in the exception provisions in the Constitution. And has said that it will not, it will not allow the Police Service Commission to proceed with the matter before the charge proceeds. So as it is now, he insists the court ruled that trial must continue. The provisions uh, says that the Nigerian police force is the highest investigating body in the country. It means that, and their commander-in-chief is the president, it means that any person arresting a police officer without recourse to the president is arresting the president. It's until and when the constitution which established the police, service com uh, police, co police and police service commission and even the police council says otherwise, we cannot uh, begin to adjudicate otherwise. Mr. Kerry, who is a former head of intelligence response team of a Nigerian police force, is facing prosecution by the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. The matter was subsequently adjourned to 16th March for continuation of trial. Celestina Iria, CBC News, Abuja. And to electoral matters now, the Labour Party governorship candidate in Lagos, Badebo wrote survival, has lamented the level of violence that greeted the polls in Lagos. Mr. Rhodes Vival, who addressed a World Press conference, said the widespread violence shows clearly that the people were not allowed to willingly choose their governor. He reacted to the call by the president-elect for a healing process that true healing will only happen when justice is done. Mr. Rhodes Vival came second in the election after polling 312,329 votes with incumbent Governor Babajide Sanwolu scoring 762,134 votes to win another four-year term in office. Senator Bola met symbol called for healing. But healing cannot happen without justice. Yet yeah, they want peace. But it's not really peace that they want. They want the peace of a graveyard. And we are going to fight it through all legal means. Because now more than ever, it, Lagos is in desperate need for us to birth our Lagos, a Lagos that is accountable. In a swift reaction, the Lagos State All Progressives Congress has frowned at Labour Party's governorship candidate, Rhodes Vival, for not apologizing to Lagosians whose sensibilities he assaulted in the months leading to the elections. The party, in a statement by its spokesman, Shaye Oladijo, said it's a baffling, it is baffling that the law enforcement agencies have not invited Mr. Rose Vival for questioning. The APC claimed that during the electioneering campaign, Lagosians labored in vain to identify his selling points, pedigree, and the substance of his manifestos. The party submits that it is now clear to all and sundry that Mr. Rose Vival's interpretation of free and fair election is only when he wins as the party ch chose to ignore his disrespect and disdain for traditional rulers and institutions by his utterances and posters. And meanwhile, Lagos State artisans and technicians have called on the Labour Party governorship candidates in last Saturday's election, Radibor wrote to Vivo, to desist from making inciting comments that may lead to breakdown of law and order. The artisans and technicians advised Rose Viva to channel his grievances to court. Speaking at a press conference in Ikeja on Wednesday, the National Coordinator of Association of Nigerian Artisans and Technicians, Adeshino Akinyemi, while congratulating Governor Babajide Sonwolu on his re-election, vowed to defend the governor's mandate. 
He also appealed to Governor Sonwolu to establish an autonomous parastatal, parastatal that will serve as an overseer agency for the operational activities of this labor force. We want to uh, call the leaders and elders of Lagos to please call Badebo Road Survival to order. Somebody that wants to win Lagos State, but has been calling terror on the state. To us, it, it, doesn't, it, does, it, does, it doesn't meet up. If he's aggrieved, he should channel his grievances toward the right channel, which is court of law. We also call on the governor to please remember his promise to us that uh, we create an office that will oversee our affairs, independent, independent in Lagos State, uh, that will oversee our affairs. We, we beg him to please remind, remember that uh, promise to create an autonomous agency that will oversee our affairs in Lagos State. The leadership of the People's Democratic Party in Delta State is grateful to God and residents of the state for the victory of his governorship candidate, Sheriff Oborowori, in Saturday's elections. Executive Assistant of Communications to Delta State Governor Fred Oganesive said the party's victory in, tw in 21 out of the 25 local governments is an attestation that the numerous media propaganda by the opposition against the party could not sway voters as expected by political detractors. Mr. Oganesive says Governor Kowa's laudable achievements in infrastructure and socioeconomic development are in public domain and voters had to align with the progress made by the party in the state. He assured that the governor-elect, Sheriff Oboriwiri, will fulfill his electioneering campaign promises and ensure equitable distribution of the dividends of democracy across the three senatorial districts of the state. Ms. Oganesive also condemned cases of election violence, intimidation, and vote buying in Ugeli North and Ethiopia West local government areas urging the State Commissioner of Police, Mohammed Ali, to investigate these allegations and prosecute the culprits.